The key verse here is going to be verse 11, so I'm going to start with reading that one. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep and will seek them out. That's the key verse that we're going to be reading today, but start at verse 1 there of chapter 34. The word of the Lord came to me, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Even to the shepherds, thus says the Lord God, Ah, shepherds of Israel, who have been feeding yourselves, should not shepherds feed the sheep? You eat the fat, you clothe yourselves with the wool, you slaughter the fat ones, but you do not feed the sheep. The weak you have not strengthened, the sick you have not healed, the injured you have not bound up, the strayed you have not brought back, the lost you have not sought. And with force and harshness you have ruled them. So they were scattered, because there was no shepherd, and they became food for all the wild beasts. My sheep were scattered. They wandered over all the mountains and on every high hill. My sheep were scattered over all the face of the earth, with none to search or seek for them. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, declares the Lord God, surely because my sheep have become a prey And my sheep have become food for all the wild beasts, since there was no shepherd. And because my shepherds have not searched for my sheep, but the shepherds have fed themselves and have not fed my sheep. Therefore, you shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I will require my sheep at their hand, and put a stop to their feeding of the sheep. No longer shall the shepherds feed themselves. I will rescue my sheep from their mouths, that they may not be food for them. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself will search for my sheep and will seek them out. As a shepherd seeks out his flock when he is among his sheep that have been scattered, so I will seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all the places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. And I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and will bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture. And on the mountain heights of Israel, they shall be their grazing land. They shall, there they shall lie down in good grazing land. On the rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd." Of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, I will bring back the strayed, I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I will destroy, I will feed them in justice. As for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God, behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. Is it not enough that you feed on the good pasture? that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture, and to drink of clear water that you muddy the rest of the water with your feet? And must my sheep eat which you have trodden with your feet, and drink which you have muddied with your feet? Therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, Behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep, because you push with side and shoulder and thrust all the weak with your horns till you have scattered them abroad, I will rescue my flock. They shall no longer be a prey, and I will judge between sheep and sheep. And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them. He shall feed them and be their shepherd, and I, the Lord, will be their God. And my servant David shall be prince among them. I am the Lord. I have spoken. So in our key verse today, God searches for His sheep. He searches for them. God is not a God who just leaves things to chance. He seeks and searches. In Luke 15, Jesus says this parable, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he has lost one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? And when he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders, rejoicing. So if there's one even, just one that wanders away, Jesus says, I will search for that one. 
even leaving the 99 to go find it. This is a real comforting thing, actually. Just one God will look for. There's certain things that if we lose, you know, so what? Who cares? We search for what we care about, don't we? If you lose something like a paper clip or maybe a pencil and you look on the ground for it and you don't see it there, you might be like, oh, oh well, I'll just get another one. No big deal. Because that, that's not really something that means a whole lot to us. It's easily replaced. But if you lose something like your wallet or your cell phone, something really valuable, you're not going to stop until you find that. You're going to be even kind of frantic, maybe. I lost my phone. I can't find it. I need my phone to breathe. You know? Some of us are anyways, right? We search for what we value. And this, that God would just leave 99 to search for one, that God searches after us, that says that God values us. God values us. So in this passage that we just read, you know, this, is, this is prophetic poetry here, we can see that in this passage, God's sheep, they're scattered and they're abused. If you pick that up, they're bad shepherds that are shepherding the sheep. And there are other sheep that are stronger that are picking on the other ones. So we know what this is like, don't we? Some of us maybe more than others. So have you ever been at the bottom of the totem pole? You know, there's pecking orders for everything in every group, aren't there? Maybe you've been last picked for the team. Maybe you've been stepped on by someone. Maybe you were dropped for somebody better. Maybe you were uninvited to the party that everybody else was attending. Have you ever been unnoticed in a crowd or forgotten by the people that you've esteemed and valued? These are the people, these are the sheep that God is looking for. These are the people and the sheep that God pays attention to. The people that we shove aside, people that we overlook, are the ones that God searches for. He searches for them. In the first ten verses that we just read, the Lord sees leaders exploiting subjects. So God isn't just talking about shepherds and sheep. There were things going on at that time that God was seeing, and he's talking about it in terms of shepherds and sheep. So back then, they didn't have a president, they had a king. And it wasn't a democracy, it was a monarchy. And back then, there would be kings that were evil and wicked and heartless. And they, instead of serving the people, they would exploit them. They would take advantage of them. And so this is what God is seeing, and this is what God is talking about. There are shepherds of sheep, but they are not serving the sheep. They are not looking after the sheep. They are just taking advantage of the sheep. They are using the sheep. Kings are often compared to shepherds in the ancient Near East, and God is following in that pattern too. Sheep are needy. They're needy creatures. I know that there's some of you out there who have had or do have sheep. How many of, how many of you have had sheep or do have sheep? A couple? Raise your hands higher so I can see. All right, there's a few. Okay, good. So I, I talked to a couple of you anyways, and uh, just to kind of get it, because I've never really had sheep or really raised them before, but Apparently, they, they kinda, they're kind of needy. Uh, I had one, that, that, uh, one book that I looked up that said, Sheep are notoriously helpless and singularly unintelligent. <laughs> so, and then I ran into this picture of a sheep that wanted to get the last bit of grain out of that bucket, 
and now it can't get the bucket off its head. Now, I, I did talk to one person who said that sheep aren't that dumb, they're mostly stubborn, so maybe there's some interpretation here, but singularly unintelligent. I talked to someone else who said that I had a, a sheep once and I, I tied it up to a tree overnight, and by morning, the sheep had strangled itself. Just not the brightest, apparently. Ken Davis, he's a comedian, he has a whole routine about sheep. Maybe you've heard it. He talks about how they can't even run right. They kind of have this geeky run, he says. And I, I don't know what he's talking about, but maybe some of you do. And he talks about how there was, there was this group of sheep, there were five sheep, and there was another one that was out ahead of the rest of them, and and this sheep was just running, running through the pasture, and then decided to take a left turn. And, oh, there's a precipice there, and 50 feet down, dead. And the rest of the sheep, instead of seeing that and thinking, oh, maybe we shouldn't do that, they said, hey, look, let's go, let's go, let's go. Bam, 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 bam. All gone. So sheep are pretty needy. They are constantly depending on their shepherd. They depend on the shepherd for protection, for grazing, for watering, for shelter, for tending to their injuries. Sheep would not survive long without a shepherd. They're prone to wandering. And apparently they're unable to find their way to a sheepfold even when it's within sight. Sheep need a lot of help. And they're easy targets if the shepherd is cruel. If you have a cruel shepherd, sheep can easily be taken advantage of. So, in verse 10, I'm going to read that one more time here. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds. People in power who take advantage of those entrusted to them will incur the wrath of God. When there are people who are in positions of power and authority and leadership, and they, instead of serving, exploit and take advantage, and there's no higher authority for them to answer to, they are going to answer to God. And God says, I am against those shepherds. On the news right now, there's a name that maybe many of you have heard named Larry Nasser. When you're in a position of authority and influence and power and you use that to exploit and take advantage, God is against you. This also refers to people who would be pedophile priests and the bishops who hide them or CEOs who fire hundreds of workers and then get hefty bonuses or parents who abuse and neglect their children. When you're in a position of authority and power, and instead of serving, you exploit, you take advantage, and you harm, there may not be another authority that's going to hold you accountable, but God is going to hold you accountable. So God is condemning corrupt leaders and says, I'm going to hold them accountable. And then he goes on, at the end, God condemns bullies. You don't need to be in a position or to have lots of power in order to take advantage of other people. In verse 18, it says, Is it not enough for you to feed on good pasture that you must tread down with your feet the rest of your pasture and to drink of clear water that you muddy the rest of the water with your feet? He's talking to other sheep here. So he's saying, not only is the shepherd bad, but the sheep are bad too. There's some sheep that are taking advantage of the others. You're bullying. In this world, a lot of that goes on, doesn't it? The strong push around the weak. Some are stronger than others. And instead of using that strength to protect or defend or to help, they use that strength to assert dominance. 
and to push their way forward and to push others aside or to push others down. And there are some who are smarter than others too. And instead of using that smartness, that intelligence to teach or to assist, there are some who use that intelligence to manipulate and to deceive, to take advantage. There's bullies in this world, as well as bad shepherds. And we don't always see these people get their due, do we? But God does. The Almighty God sees it, and there will be a reckoning. Even when we don't see justice done, God will make sure that it does get done. Verse 17, as for you, my flock, thus says the Lord God. Whenever, whenever it says, thus says the Lord, that means this is a statement of God. You better pay attention here. Thus says the Lord God. Behold, I judge between sheep and sheep, between rams and male goats. And verse 20, therefore, thus says the Lord God to them, behold, I, I myself will judge between the fat sheep and the lean sheep. There's fat sheep and there's lean sheep. So, in this world, it's the strong who rule the weak. And it's the intelligent who manipulate everybody else. But in God's world, He says, Blessed are the meek, because they are going to inherit the earth. Blessed are those who are merciful, they are will be shown mercy. So what this is saying to us here is that all oppressors and bullies, they should be in fear. They should tremble. But all the lowly, they should rejoice. They should rejoice because God is seeing all of this and there's going to be a reckoning. The bullies might win today. The strong people might win today. And you know what? They can have today. They can have it. They can have one day. Because in the Lord, we have an eternity. Satan might win today. He might. And he can have today. He's got an eternity that he is not looking forward to. And we are. Because though nobody sees, God sees. God sees even what nobody else does. All of the wrongs that are done in this world that nobody sees, God sees them. Proverbs 15.3 The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. Everywhere God is seen. And though no one acts, God acts. Psalm 103, verse 6, The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. God is a God of justice. And He brings justice to whoever needs it. Maybe not today, but He does. And though nobody cares, God cares. He's the one who searches for us. Psalm 27, verse 10 says it this, Though my father and mother forsake me, The Lord will receive me. So even if your own father and mother forsake you, the Lord receives you. All people and leaders are going to let us down. They're all imperfect people. They all have limitations. Their knowledge is limited. Their power is limited. They're going to let us down. So that means parents, that means police, that means presidents, and that means pastors. We're going to let you down. We're not going to be the shepherd that you are really looking for. These, even the best of them, even the best of them are just under shepherds of the great shepherd. And these under shepherds hopefully are pointing you towards the great shepherd. Because all of us, we will fail you somewhere, somehow. Even the best of us will. But there's one shepherd who will not fail you. 
Every human has their limits, but we have a God who has no limits at all. Look at the screen and let's answer this together. How does the knowledge of God's creation and providence help us? We can be patient when things go against us, thankful when things go well, and for the future, we can have good confidence in our faithful God and Father that nothing will separate us from His love. All creatures are so completely in His hand that without His will, they can neither move nor be moved. We have a God who we say is sovereign. That means He's in control. So even when bad things are happening, that maybe He allows sometimes, He sees it, He takes account of it, and He's going to bring justice. He's going to make things right. And He's going to search out and seek after everybody who's scattered. There's a shepherd coming who won't let us down. And it talks about it in this passage. Maybe you caught it. If you notice in verse 15, I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord. I myself. You notice how in our key verse here, the word I is repeated. I, I myself. God is saying, this is me. I'm going to do it. So this shepherd is divine. But he's also human. If you noticed verse 23, And I will set up over them one shepherd, my servant David, and he shall feed them, and he shall feed them and be their shepherd. We have a shepherd who is human and divine. And Jesus Christ is that good shepherd. And Jesus Christ himself identified himself that way. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and is not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves in the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he has a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Twice, I am the good shepherd. So he might tarry. He might wait. He is a patient God that he does not forget. And he may test us, but he will refine us. And we might be scattered for a time, but he will search for us. He searches for us, ultimately by dying on the cross. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. As it says in the Bible, while we were sinners, Christ died for us. Even while we were sinners, the good shepherd is the one who lays down his life and he searches for us, ultimately in that way. And so if you follow this good shepherd, if you call yourself a Christian, if you say Jesus is your Lord, then this means that we live like this shepherd. We put our trust in this shepherd. And this shepherd lived very differently than this world does. Very differently. In a world shoving for power, believers are living for Jesus. This is our cadet motto. The world is going to live its way. We, as Christians, we live a different way. This means we overcome evil with good, like he did. This means, like he, when insulted, we don't retaliate. When he suffered, he didn't threaten. Same with us. Like him, embrace humility, surrender, and service. This is what it means to follow Jesus. Embracing humility, surrender, and service. And so true justice is not what you can bring to this world. It's trusting in Him who judges justly. Jesus demonstrates that true power is actually in weakness. Position means you serve. He is the King. And He was a servant. 
Honor is through humility. He did not seek his own honor. He did not have any official position. He didn't have a crown on his head. And yet we honor him to this day. Gain is through loss. He says, who would rather gain the whole world but lose your soul? Jesus surrendered it all and he gained it all. Defeating your enemies means forgiving them. It doesn't mean getting them back. It means extending forgiveness to them. The world doesn't understand this. But if you follow the shepherd, then you do. Life means dying to self. It means putting yourself aside and living for Him. He rose again from the dead and He lives to this day. He lives forevermore, never to die again. So true life is through death. This doesn't make sense to the human mind. But if you follow this shepherd, you've seen it happen. And you will see it happen again and again. You will see it happen in your own life too. Because one day, we are going to rise out of our graves, just like he did. So, dear friends, trust in the shepherd who gave all to search for us. And he still searches for us to this day. Because he did not die in vain. Let's live for the leader who never lets us down. And let's bow our heads and let's pray. Lord our God, our Father, and our Savior Jesus Christ, we pray, O Lord, to you this day. We pray that we would seek you as even as you seek us and that, Lord, we would follow you as you are the good shepherd. And while there are bad shepherds out there and while there are bad sheep out there, Lord, help us to keep our eyes on you, and Lord, to live as you did, and Lord, to put our trust in who you are in your justice. In Jesus' name, amen.